Hi everybody, it's meteorologist Terry Swales. It is November 30th and this is your weather briefing and still recovering from Thanksgiving. Been doing plenty of eating around here. There's still a little turkey left. Had some for breakfast this morning. Threw in some orange juice on that and boy I'm, I'm ready to roll. So let's dig into the weather scene here and we'll show you what's going on. And a couple things we're going to look at here is the NAO and the AO. Now typically those are phases that we would like to see negative to experience cold temperatures, especially over the eastern and central United States. But this November has been exceptionally cold, and to be honest with you, most of the time, the NAO and the AO has been running in a positive phase. You would expect to see warmer temperatures. That has not necessarily been the case, though, as November is going to run up oh, about a deficit of one degree across the country, and that'll be the coldest November in approximately 13 years. So there's some things going on in the Pacific Ocean that are actually controlling the weather around the nation right now. So we have what's known as the Western Pacific Oscillation and the Eastern Pacific Oscillation. And those two are really running strongly negative. Big high pressure up in Alaska has been diverting the flow in from the northwest. And so that's bring, bringing the cold air into the country. So despite the NAO and the AO being in what we call positive phases most of this month, there has definitely been a lot of cold around the country. Now, as we showed you on the uh, NAO here, you can see that that is expected to now take a little dip and go into the negative phase. So that's going to be significant in the sense that we should start to see colder air and some blocking in the atmosphere. Also, look what happens to the AO here. That also goes pretty strongly negative, too. So with this happening, I'm expecting a lot of cold air to come flooding into the United States and boy, we're going to really start to feel that later on this week and into the upcoming weekend. Take a look here at the 500 millibar chart, and this is for December 7th. And all that blue-green area there is below normal heights. That's where there's some real cold air across the country. Uh, you can see there's a big block where there's that orange up there in Alaska, and that is allowing the jet stream to come in from the northwest around that, and it's sending cold air into the nation. And by November 7th, Park de Guerre is going to be covering a lot of the country. And take a look at this temperature anomaly here, too. This is pretty significant, to say the least. And where you're seeing those purples and into that fuchsia color there, some of those temperatures are running 25 to 48 degrees below normal. Now, there's a little question as to just how far south that's going to penetrate, but it is going to get into the middle of the nation here, and the Midwest is really going to cool down. We're looking at temperatures that should be 20, 25 degrees below normal. But that real nasty, nasty stuff, hopefully that'll stay up near the Canadian border. Let's take a look then at some of the temperatures from December 7th. And boy, you can see the cold air has really set up shop across oh, northern Minnesota and up into the Dakotas. High temperature is not going to be above zero in that part of the upper Midwest and the northern plains. And uh, that's awful cold for this early in the season, got to tell you that. The other thing to look at too here is the wind chills that we're expecting. This will be accompanied by a great big high pressure, Arctic high. Should be a pretty tight grading around that. So I would expect towards the weekend the winds will pick up, the temperatures will fall, and sub-zero wind chills as cold as 30 to 40 below are expected in parts of northwestern Minnesota and up in the Dakotas. And that is some dangerous cold to say the least. Now what about snow? There's been a lot of talk about that here recently. And it does appear that the models are getting a little bit better on their solutions as to what's going to happen here. There's going to be one wave of energy that comes on out, and that's going to be on Tuesday, and that's expected to track across the upper Midwest. So most of the heavier snows with that will be located up in the Dakotas, northern Minnesota, maybe the UP of Michigan should be some hefty amounts of snow there. That's going to drag a front through. That's the Arctic front we talked about. Kind of stall out for a couple of days. And then some waves of energy are expected to develop along that. So here we are on Thursday, and you can see that another batch of snow is expected to form somewhere down in Missouri, and maybe southern Illinois or Indiana, somewhere in that general area, and then streak on to the northeast. Now that's more of an overrunning event, not a classic storm to say the least. But with the Arctic front sitting there and moisture piling over the top of that, it should generate some pretty good snows. So the question is where and how much. So let's go back here and take a look at what the European is doing. Now, again, we talked about how up in North Dakota and Minnesota and the UP of Michigan, some pretty good snows are expected. You can see that laid out there. But notice just to the southeast of Iowa, across parts of Missouri and the southeastern half of Illinois and then into Indiana, big snows 
expected thereof, the European. And that's all that overrunning event that we talked about. Now, again, I think that's a realistic possibility with the warm air overrunning the cold air that's just going to be sitting there for a couple of days. And that might be a little high on the amounts. But the point is, there should be a secondary area of snow develop as this Arctic air gets entrenched. Now, the GFS not nearly as bullish on that. You can see its amounts are substantially lighter. And that's probably a little more realistic scenario, but I do think it'll be much wider than what the GFS is showing there. Just a little narrow band of snow is all it has. I think there's going to be wintry weather definitely over some parts of the Midwest and the Ohio Valley. Can't say for sure where that's going to happen, though, because if the cold air stalls a little further northwest, that could also be pulled back northwest. And so, you know, at this point... I think it's just something we'll have to watch. But I do expect to see some additional snows form around the Midwest here later on this week. But the initial batch expected to fall in the next few days up to the north in Minnesota and the Dakotas and the far upper Midwest. And then one thing is for sure, after all of this moves on out, old man winter will be in control across the upper Midwest. That old icy nasty breath will be blowing cold winds in here and some pretty ugly temperatures as we get towards the upcoming weekend. So that's your briefing for today. Thanks for joining me, and as always, roll weather.